हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस सेशन ऑन स्ट्रैटेजिक फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट फ्रेंड्स इन दिस क्लास ऑफ स्ट्रैटेजिक फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग विद द टॉपिक डेरेवेटिव एंड दिस इज द एक्सटेंडेड लेक्चर टू द एथ लेक्चर ऑफ डेरेवेटिव टाइटल्ड एज एट ए हियर वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कशन अबाउट ऑप्शन वैल्यूएशन मॉडल्स एंड दैट विल बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग द डिराइवेशन ऑफ portfolio replication model so in the previous class that is in lecture 8 i have given you the step by step process of determining the value of call option by using portfolio replication model but how to derive the logical approach for portfolio replication model or understanding what is the core logic behind those steps that is what we are aiming at discussing over here so of course we need to take some basis of an example and for this purpose i am directly taking you to one of the questions in your textbook that will be question number 22 let us first read this question and let me expand the screen size for you it says current market price of the share is rupees 165 one year call option is available at exercise price of rupees 176 risk free rate of interest is 10% per annum the probable market price at the end of the year will be either a lower probable price or a higher probable price which is 190 or 200 determine the value of call option using portfolio replication model so the question is how do we approach this whole thing logically without applying any mechanical procedure now of course this uh, portfolio replication model is a great model it is such a logically devised model you just need to crack and understand that logic so replication is basically replication of a stock portfolio that an investor could create so let us have our understanding very very clear that suppose the investor has purchased one share that's all so what is the current market price given over here for one share rupees 165 that's all alternate strategy that you should adopt we have learned this in put call parity theory in lecture 8 that if you are not interested in buying the share you should instead buy a call option if you are having bullish sentiment see why an investor is buying a share because the investor is expecting that today the price is less later on the price will be higher and because of these bullish sentiments the investor is buying the share and we have also learned that call options are generally held by investors who have bullish sentiments who are expecting that the price would go up so instead of buying the share itself you are buying a call option a call option with an exercise price of 176 and we have learned in put call parity equation that if you are holding a call option with an intent to actually buy the share at the later stage what should you do you should invest the present value of exercise price in risk free investment so an alternate strategy can be created where you would take the present value of exercise price exercise price given over here is 176 risk free interest rate is 10% so if i take my calculator and if i work it out i get 176 divided by 1.1 because it is one year time horizon i am getting rupees 160 as the present value of exercise price that money i will put in risk free investment the maturity value of this risk free investment will be 176 so we have created an alternate strategy where we have purchased the call option we don't know what was the premium for that call option that is what we are going to find correct so we don't know what is the premium of that call option let us call that as c so c is the premium for call option and the present value of investment is 160 so c plus 160 is the present value of investment in this strategy the alternate strategy was simply holding a share now if you have created this strategy you would want to see the outcome of this strategy so assume that the price is uh, the lower probable price by end of the year which is 
the lower probable price itself is greater than the exercise price. So, when you are talking about call option, you would definitely exercise the call option at the lower probable price also, because that time the market price would be 190 and the exercise price of the option is just 176. So, risk free investment maturity value will be 176 and on exercising the call option, you will be getting the differential of market price minus exercise price even at lower probable price you would exercise the option and get the differential benefit of 190 minus 176 that is rupees 14 and that club together the value will be 190 in your hand which would match with the outcome of holding the stock because even if you are holding the stock you are still getting the wealth in your hand as rupees 190 even at lower probable price. What if the price goes up to 200 the higher probable price in that case if you are holding the share the value in your hand will be 200 correct. If you are holding the option the call option exercise price is 176 and the market price is 200 the differential benefit will be 24 and the maturity value of risk free investment will be 176 you will be getting 176 plus 24 that is combined value 200 as wealth in your hand in this strategy. So, whether it is the stock portfolio or an option portfolio their outcome is exactly the same by end of the year if the outcome is same the present value of investment should also be the same and through this you will derive the value of call option. So, what I am going to do is I am going to show you systematically the logical approach for finding the answer and I will also give you the examination viewpoint presented answer. So, that if a question like this comes in exam how should you present the answer over there. So, let us go step by step we first would write the answer by following a very very clear logic over here and over there you just write this paragraph as per portfolio replication model the investor can simply create a stock portfolio by purchasing an equity share at the prevailing market price that is rupees 165. The present value of investment under the stock portfolio will be rupees 165. The value of stock portfolio by year end can be either of the following if lower probable price prevails the value equals to 190 if higher probable price prevails the value equals to rupees 200. Let us move ahead and continue writing further. The investor can alternatively create an option portfolio by purchasing a call option and simultaneously investing the present value of exercise price in risk free investment. Let the call option premium be C. The present value of investment in such option portfolio will be C plus PV of exercise price. Now, exercise price in the given question is 176 and the risk free interest rate is 10 percent. So, the answer will be C plus 176 by 1.1 and that would give you C plus 160. Let us move ahead and continue writing further. The value of such option portfolio by end of the year will be as below there could be two possible market prices one is lower probable price of 190 another is higher probable price of 200 when the lower probable price prevails that is 190 the question is is your call option exercisable answer is yes definitely the call option is exercisable because the market price is 190 whereas the exercise price is just 176 so the difference between market price and exercise price that is 190 minus 176 will be the value of the option and that would be rupees 14 and if the higher probable price prevails that is 200 still the option is exercisable because it is a call option it will be exercisable every time when the market price is greater than the exercise price and market price minus exercise price will be the value of the option that is 200 minus 176 that gives you rupees 24. Now, the value of risk free investment we do not have to put any doubts at all it will be 176 because one year back you invested 160 
and the rate of interest in risk free investment is 10 percent per annum. So, 160 plus 10 percent will make it 176. In fact, how we got that 160 it was present value of 176. So, obviously by end of the year the maturity value of risk free investment has to be 176. In your option portfolio you have both of these included. So, the total value of your portfolio will be aggregate of A plus B that will be 14 plus 176 as 190 and 24 plus 176 as 200. So, we would say the value of this option portfolio by year end can be either of the following. If lower probable price prevails the value will be rupees 190. If higher probable price prevails the value will be rupees 200. Let us move ahead and continue writing further. We would say it is observed that the value of the option portfolio is matching with that of the stock portfolio by the year end. That is to say option portfolio appears to be a complete replication of the stock portfolio. If the two portfolios result into same values at year end then the PV of the two portfolios should also be equal. So, what we can conclude 160 plus C should be equal to 165. So, C should be 165 minus 160, C should be 5. Conclusion is the value of call option in today's term will be rupees 5. Now, there are few more concepts that we have yet to discuss. So, please keep patience because if you could see when we learned that step by step procedure, there was a point where we have learnt something about n that is number of call options against each share. We have also learnt that your present value of investment should include the present value of exercise price or present value of lower probable price whichever is lower. That logic we have yet to understand and for that I would just ask you to wait for a while. When I take another example I will be incorporating that particular logic as well. As of now what I want you to do is the same question suppose a question like this comes in examination then the answer to be presented in examination would be as per the procedure that you have learnt earlier. So, let me show you that process as well and better take note of that as well. So, in examination you do not have to write these descriptions in examination what you have to write I am just about to share with you. And the heading will be determining the value of call option using portfolio replication model. Step 1 determine the spread between the two probable market prices expected by end of the period. So, spread will be higher probable price minus lower probable price and that will be 200 minus 190 that is rupees 10. Step 2 will be determine the spread between the two probable option values expected by end of the period that is on maturity. So, spread will be option value at higher probable price minus option value at lower probable price. We have already concluded that the value of option at these two probable prices will be 24 and 14 respectively. So, the spread will be 24 minus 14 that will be rupees 10, but how to identify this 10 we have to present a working note that is working note number 1. Let us first write up that working note number 1 where option value for call option when exercised it is always market price minus exercise price. If higher probable price prevails that is 200 value of option will be rupees 24 because you will exercise the option and if the lower probable price prevails that is 190 you would still exercise the option and the option value will be rupees 14. This is how we get 24 and 14. Let us move ahead and now talk about the next step that is step 3. Determine the number of call options to be contracted against each equity share that is n. n is equal to spread in probable share price divided by spread in probable option value that will be 10 by 10 in our example and that will be one call option against each share. Let us move ahead and deal with the last step that is step 4 formulate the equation and determine the present value of call option. This is the equation we have already discussed this S0 equals to N into C plus PV of LPP or EP that is lower probable price or exercise price whichever is lower. So, because 
the value of n that we got was just 1 value of s 0 we have as 165. So, we would now frame the equation this way 165 equals to 1 c plus p v of either 190 or 176 whichever is lower. So, obviously, it is going to be p v of 176. So, 165 equals to c plus 176 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1 and that will be giving you 165 equals to c plus 160. So, value of c will be 165 minus 160 that will be rupees 5. Let us move ahead and now take up question number 23. Let us read this question. Current market price of the share is given as 165. One year call option is available at an exercise price of rupees 176. Risk free rate of interest is 10 percent per annum. The probable market price at end of the year will be lower probable price is given as 152, higher probable price is given as 200. Determine the value of call option using portfolio replication model. This question is exactly similar to the earlier question. The only difference is the lower probable price this time is very low just 152. Let us see how to go ahead with the logical approach first. So, logically as per portfolio replication model, the investor can simply create a stock portfolio by purchasing an equity share at prevailing market price that is rupees 165. Therefore, the present value of investment under stock portfolio will be rupees 165. The value of this stock portfolio by the year end can be either of the following. If lower probable price prevails, the value equals to rupees 152. If higher probable price prevails, the value equals to rupees 200. Let us move ahead and now we would say the investor can alternatively create an option portfolio by purchasing a call option and simultaneously investing the PV of exercise price in risk free investment. It is exactly same as what we have written earlier right. So, let the call option premium be C. So, present value of investment in such option portfolio will be C plus P V of exercise price. So, it will be C plus 176 by 1 1.1 and that will be C plus 160. Let us move ahead and now what we would say the value of such option portfolio by end of the year will be as below. So, we just plot this table in the same manner as we did in earlier question. The lower probable price is 152, the higher probable price is 200 and these were the expected values of your stock portfolio. Let us have a look at what will happen in option portfolio. Now, what will happen when the lower probable price prevails? What will happen to the value of option? First of all, exercise price in this given example is 176. If the lower probable price prevails, the option is not exercisable because market price is 152 and exercise price is 176 an option is exercisable only and only when the market price exceeds the exercise price which is not the case over here. So, here the option would lapse and I would say the value of option would be simply 0. However, when it is higher probable price that is rupees 200 as market price by end of the year option will be definitely exercised and its value will be rupees 24. How 24? market price minus exercise price that is 200 minus 176 that would give you 24. Value of risk free investment will be 176 you know it why. So, what will be the aggregate values over here 176 and 200. Now, there is a problem what is the problem look at the lower probable price it was 152 but the maturity value of your option portfolio is 176. So, if you are holding the stock portfolio, the wealth in your hand at lower probable price would have been 152, but the wealth over here is 176. However, if I compare what would happen at higher probable price, if you are holding the stock portfolio, the wealth in your hand will be 200. If you are holding the option portfolio, the wealth in your hand will still be 200. So, we have no problem at higher probable price. There is however, a mismatch at the lower probable price. Here, 
the value that we wanted should be replicating 152 but the value that we are now having is 176. So, first of all we would write that it is observed that there is a mismatch in the portfolio values at the lower probable price the value that we wanted is 152. Now, at the lower probable price this 152 is not going to change right. So, the option will not be exercised. So, this 0 cannot change this will remain as it is. However, we can make a change to the value of RFI because we wanted 176 we have invested in the present value of 176, but now we want to replace this value of 176 by 152. So, instead of investing in the present value of 176, we would prefer investing in the present value of 152. So, that the maturity value of risk free investment should come to 152. Let me take you ahead and show you how to remove this mismatch. So, we would write to remove this mismatch an alteration is required in the option portfolio that is instead of investing the present value of exercise price in risk free investment the amount to be invested should be the present value of lower probable price that is 152 divided by 1.1 and that would give you 138.18. So, the present value of such option portfolio will be aggregate of these two. So, C is the call option premium that you have paid. So, this is part of your investment and another value that you have invested in risk free investment is 138.18. So, your option portfolio present value of investment will be C plus 138.18. Let us continue and see what happens now. The value of such option portfolio by end of the year will be as below. So, we again formulate this table and what we would now see lower probable price is 152, higher probable price is 200. The value of option will be 0 and 24 I do not have to explain you this you have understood it very well. The value of risk free investment this time will not be 176, but it will be 152. So, 152 whether it is lower probable price or higher probable price risk free investment value will simply be 152 because you invested present value of 152 one year back. So, on maturity it will be exactly 152. So, can you now notice one thing that the aggregate of A plus B for the lower probable price it became 152 matching with 152 which was actually the wealth in the hands of the investor at lower probable price. However, when we wanted to remove the mismatch at lower probable price look at the side effect of the same. Now, if I take 24 plus 152 it would match with 176 we wanted 200 and here it is 176. So, no matter what we are trying to do the option portfolio outcome is not matching with the stock portfolio outcome at all no matter what we do. But one thing that we should still do is do not give up at this stage do not give up many a times we keep trying 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 and things do not work for us. The whole idea the biggest philosophy in life is do not give up keep trying you will get what you want. So, now try to observe one point where the whole logic will rest further. There are certain things now which we have modified and we cannot change. So, we will try to change something which is changeable or alterable. So, let me show you that and this is something interesting over here. So, what do we find there is now a mismatch at a higher probable price. So, we would say there is now a mismatch with respect to higher probable price. So, we wanted what value over here we wanted what value over here we wanted 200 and we are not finding that value over here we are just finding this as 176. So, what we need to do is we want to make this as 200, but I would not compare this with 200 straight away. I would rather see that this value 152 is not alterable. Why? If I alter this value, 
the lower probable price will again have a mismatch. So, I cannot alter this value. If this is not alterable means this is not alterable and this 0 would never change anyway. So, out of these 4 values this cannot change, this cannot change, this cannot change. The only value that can change is this value. Now, let us focus on one thing that if I want to find the gap between the value of RFI and the market price, what is the gap between these two? So, I am trying to trace the gap between 152 and 200. The gap between these two I am finding as 48, correct? 200 minus 152 is 48. So, if this value was not 24, currently it is 24, right? Look at this, it is 24. If this was not 24, but 48, our objective would have matched. But how would you bring this 48? The idea is simple. Value of one call option over here is 24. Instead of one call option, if you hold two call options, the value will be 48. However, it will not change the value over here because when option is not exercised, whether it is one call option or two call option, the overall value will still remain 0. So, we would conclude one thing in order to remove this mismatch with respect to higher probable price an alteration will be made in the option portfolio where the number of call option will not be 1. Let us move ahead and now I will show once again this table to you with the alteration made and what alteration we have suggested lower probable price and higher probable price as it is 152 and 200 this value is 0 the value of risk free investment is 152 in either case. So, the value of your portfolio at the lower probable price is 152. At the higher probable price it will be aggregate of this value plus 152, but what we are aiming at ultimately we want a value over here which should match with 200. So, let us first put this 200. So, I have put this 200. So, what is the balancing figure over here? that balancing figure is the required value of call option that will be 48. This is the balancing figure and how we obtain this it was difference between 200 and 152. So, we would say required value of option at year end should be rupees 48 actual value of option at year end for each call option it was rupees 24. When I say rupees 24 I am definitely talking about the value at higher probable price. Therefore, if you do not want 24 over here, but 48 over here, how many call options you should hold? The answer is the number of call options against each equity share will be required value of option that is 48 divided by actual value of option that is 24. So, 48 divided by 24 would give you 2 call options. This is the value of n that we generally apply in our solution for portfolio replication model and this is the logic behind what you have been doing all the time. Let us move ahead and continue writing further. Therefore, the option portfolio should comprise of 2 call options plus PV of lower probable price. Therefore, PV of option portfolio will be 2C plus 138.18. It is observed that the modified option portfolio as above replicates the stock portfolio. So, finally, we could create a portfolio which will be replication of the stock portfolio and we would now conclude that the PV of the two portfolio must be equal. So, now we have 2C plus 138.18 matching with 165. So, 2C equals to 26.82 value of C will be 13.41. So, please write up this whole thing and that will be end of this discussion. However, how to present the solution from examination viewpoint? You cannot write this big description. In examination, we will just write up 4 steps and get this answer. Let me take you ahead and show you how to present this solution from examination viewpoint. There you would write determining the value of call option using portfolio replication model. Step 1 determining the spread between the two probable market prices expected by end of the period. So, spread will be higher probable price minus lower probable price that will be 200 minus 152 and that would give you rupees 48. 
step 2 determine the spread between the two probable option values expected by end of the period that is on maturity. So, spread will be option value at higher probable price minus option value at lower probable price and the values will be 24 and 0 and you know how we got that 24 and 0 already. Still as part of your solution I will show it as a, a working note and that will be working note number 1. Let us move ahead and write up that working note number 1 and here we would say option value for call option when exercised it is MP minus EP. So, if higher probable price prevails that is 200 option value will be 200 minus 176 that is rupees 24 because you will exercise the option. If lower probable price prevails that is 152 you are not going to exercise the option the option will lapse and its value will be 0. Let us move ahead and take up the next step that will be step 3 determine the number of call options to be contracted against each equity share n equals to spread in probable share price divided by spread in probable option value and that will be 48 divided by 24 two call options. So, can you now understand we have logically understood why we should have this kind of two call options in the process earlier, but in the step 3 it is just a procedure and this is what you have learnt earlier. Let us move ahead and now we write up the last step that is fourth step formulate the equation and determine the present value of call option that is C. So, present value of call option is C this is what we want to find and the equation is S0 equals to N into C plus PV of lower probable price or exercise price whichever is lower. So, we will say 165 equals to 2 C plus PV of 152 or 176 whichever is lower. So, it will be 165 equals to 2 C plus 152 divided by 1.1 because between lower probable price and exercise price it is lower probable price that is lower this time. So, 165 equals to 2 C plus 138.18 2 C equals to 165 minus 138.18 that will be 26.82 and C equals to rupees 13.41. Let us move ahead and now time for us to learn understanding the derivation of binomial model. Let us do one thing let us take up the question 20 the question that you have already solved let us take that same example for understanding the derivation of binomial model and question 20 is giving reference to question 17 and asking you to find the value of call option using binomial model and the base data was given in question 17. But question 17 has asked you to apply portfolio replication model instead of portfolio replication model now we are attempting the solution as per binomial model. However, we have already done this solution earlier the objective of this discussion over here is basically to understand the derivation of formula in binomial model that is basically binomial model formula. So, let us begin over here the investor can have one alternative that is invest in money market where you get risk free investment. So, do you know in the question there was spot price of the share given as rupees 400. So, if the investor is investing rupees 400 not in stock market, but in money market 400 of today will become 440 after one year maturity value in money market will be 400 invested at present at 10 percent per annum interest rate will become rupees 440 after one year. Accordingly, if I consider an investment of rupee 1 in money market after one year it will become 1.1 with the same interest rate that is 10 percent per annum. Let us move ahead and now what we say the alternative to is invest in stock market. So, if you invest in stock market rupees 400 today it can either become rupees 480 if higher probable price prevails or it can become rupees 360 if lower probable price prevails. So, with both of these uh, situations let us mention the condition applicable that is if higher or lower probable price prevails. 
So, what would be the market value if you are investing rupees 400 today? What will be the market value after one year? It could be either 480 or 360. So, we have two possible outcomes in the money market alternative that was alternative one we had only one outcome invest 400 now and you get 440 after one year here you can have two possible outcomes either 480 or 360 so we would write maturity value in stock market after one year 400 invested today at present is expected to become rupees 480 after one year if higher probable price prevails or rupees 360 after one year if lower probable price prevails so, if I take the base of investment as 400, it is becoming either 480 or 360. If I shift the base of investment from 400 to rupee 1, what will rupee 1 of today become? If 400 becomes 480, 400 becomes 360. So, what will be the outcome if you invest just 1 rupee? So, I would say accordingly, rupee 1 invested at present is expected to become either rupee 1.20 after one year if higher probable price prevails or rupee 0 0.90 after one year if lower probable price prevails. So, please understand this paragraph this is something very very important if 400 becomes 480 then 1 rupee logically should become 1.2 if 400 becomes 360 1 rupee logically would become rupee 0 0.9 after one year. So, please write up this much and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and now what we say capital I is basically 1 plus I. So, this small I is the risk free interest rate and capital I will be the future value of rupee 1. So, if you are investing rupee 1 after 1 year the future value will be 1 plus I this future value will be considered as the value after one year with 10 percent per annum interest the future value of 1 rupee would become 1.1. This 1.1 is basically the value of i the capital I. So, what will be the value of u? u is HPP divided by S0 that is if 400 of today is expected to become 480 after one year I repeat if 400 of today is expected to become rupees 480 after one year it is implied that 1 rupee of today would become 1.2 after one year then d stands for lpp divided by s0 that is lower probable price divided by s0 over there we would say 400 invested now after one year is expected to become 360 if the lower probable price prevails so, if 400 is expected to become 360, 1 rupee of today will become 0 0.9. Now, we would say let the probability of rise in price be x, therefore, the probability of fall in price will be 1 minus x because there are only two possible outcomes either the price will rise or the price will fall. Let me take you ahead and now what we say if you can recollect the risk neutral model equation maturity value of risk free investment equals to higher probable price into probability of rise in price plus lower probable price into probability of fall in price. Now, what will be the maturity value of risk free investment if the investment made today is 1 rupee it will be 1.1. So, 1.1 higher probable price will be 1.2 because 1 rupee of today will become 1.2 if higher probable price prevails and probability of rise in price we have assumed as x lower probable price 1 rupee of now will become 0 0.9 after one year and the probability of fall in price will be 1 minus x. So, when you get this equation solved you get the value of x and value of x will actually represent the probability of rise in price. So, if you solve this equation what you get 1.1 equals to 1.2 x plus 0 0.9 into 1 remains 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 into minus x becomes minus 0 0.9 x. So, when you solve this you can shift this 0 0.9 to the left hand side. So, you get 1.1 minus 0 0.9 equals to 1.20 x minus 0 0.90 x. Now, what you do is 
if you consider this term you can take x common right. So, if you take x common what you get x common taken and what you get within brackets is 1.2 minus 0 0.9 and on the other side it is 1.1 minus 0 0.9 as it is. So, now through this I want to determine the value of x. So, I do not want you people to solve this part because here we have already solved this equation actually speaking 1.2 minus 0 0.9 will become 0 0.3 and 1.1 minus 0 0.9 will become 0 0.2. Solving this equation you will get the value of x as 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.3. We have already learned that while solving question number 20. Our root is not that right now. What we want to do is we want to find the value of x logically and that would be from this equation it will be basically 1.1 minus 0 0.9 if you divide it by 1.2 minus 0 0.9 you get the value of x. So, this is how we are getting this value. Now, as per our variables what is this 1.1? What is this 1.1? Some time back we have discussed that this is i. What is this 1.2? This was u and what is this 0 0.9? This is d. So, basically we can say this whole thing is the value of x means this whole thing is the probability of rise in price. If you put it by terms you can say as per binomial model probability of rise in price will be i minus d upon u minus t. Let me take you ahead and now what we do is we have figured out that the probability of rise in price is i minus d upon u minus t. Now, you tell me how do you find the probability of fall in price? If this is x probability of fall in price will be 1 minus x correct. So, if I take 1 minus this whole term I will get the probability of fall in price let us write that probability of fall in price will be 1 minus i minus d upon u minus t. If I have to mathematically solve this I can write 1 as u minus d upon u minus t. So, this is basically 1 u minus d upon u minus t minus this term remains as it is i minus d upon u minus t. Now, we have a common denominator u minus d. So, what we get in numerator u minus d minus i minus t. So, what we get is u minus t minus of i minus d. So, you should put i minus d within brackets. Okay. Now, when you open these brackets what will happen you will find you get u minus d minus i plus d divided by u minus t. I am sure you understand these mathematical terms right. When you open this bracket minus of i minus d will become minus i and then minus of minus will become plus d. So, minus i plus t. Now, we have plus d in the numerator we have minus d in the numerator minus d and plus d will get cancelled and what we get is u minus i divided by u minus t. So, we can conclude probability of fall in price will be u minus i divided by u minus t and what we have figured out 2 by 3 was the probability of rise in price 1 by 3 was the probability of fall in price. This we have computed in risk neutral model as well as in binomial model. Let us move ahead and now what we do is we understand one thing that the investor has rupees 400 in hand to invest and there can be two possible outcomes in the stock market either the price will rise to 480 or the price will drop to 360. So, the probability of rise in price is 2 by 3 so that the share price becomes 480 and the probability of drop in price is 1 by 3 so that the price becomes 360. Now, we want to figure out what will be the outcome for the call option. You remember the call option exercise price is 440 in the question correct call option exercise price is 440. So, when you get the market price by end of the year as 480 what would you do with the call option will you exercise the call option or let it lapse the answer is you will exercise the call option and the payoff or the value of that call option will be 40 and how we got that 40 480 minus 440 that is market price minus exercise price and when the price goes 360 you are not supposed to exercise your call option because 
your call option will be out of the money. So, you will not exercise the call option. Condition to exercise the call option is what? The market price of the share should be greater than the exercise price. This is not such condition and therefore, you will not exercise your call option. You will let it lapse. So, its value becomes 0. So, we can say that end of the year, the value of the option will be either 40 or it will be 0. So, what will be the probable value of your option? Tell me probable value of option by end of the year, it will be either 40 or 0. 40 has a probability of 2 by 3, 0 has a probability of 1 by 3. So, how will I compute probable value of option on expiry? I would simply say 40 into 2 by 3 plus 0 into 1 by 3. So, what will be the present value of this option? If this is the probable value of option on expiry, what will be the present value of the option? This whole value, if you divide by 1 plus interest rate, you will get the present value of the option, right? A future value can be converted into present value by dividing it by 1 plus the appropriate discounting rate. Here, discounting rate is 10 percent. So, I would write present value of call option will be 40 into 2 by 3 plus 0 into 1 by 3 divided by 1 plus 0 0.10 that would give you 26.67 divided by 1.1 and that was 24.24. What we do next is we would say present value of call option that is C. How did we find that present value of call option? Let us rewrite that. It is 40 into 2 by 3 plus 0 into 1 by 3 whole divided by 1 plus 0 0.10. Now, what was this value 40? It was value of call option when the price goes up by symbolic presentation in binomial model value of call option when the price goes up it is symbolized as Cu. What is this 0? It is the value of call option when the price goes down symbolically it is Cd. What is this 1 plus 0 0.10? This is 1 plus risk free interest rate that is 1 plus small i as per binomial model this 1 plus small i is referred as capital I. Then what was this 2 by 3? 2 by 3 was the probability of rise in price correct? 2 by 3 was the probability of rise in price. What was this 1 by 3? This 1 by 3 was the probability of fall in price. So, if you want you can just apply the formula over here the value of call option the present value of call option C. So, what is the value of C? I write the formula C equals to C u into probability of rise in price that is I minus D upon U minus D plus C D into probability of fall in price that is U minus I by U minus D whole upon capital I and this is nothing but the formula as per binomial model and that will be end of this discussion.